Hi this is Ruchi Kulkarni welcome to my channel today we are going to do the poem the tale of custard the dragon from your book first flight of class 10th this poem is written by Ogden Nash let's begin with the session Ogden Nash has written a poem about a girl Belinda who owns many pets namely a black kitten named Ink gray mouse named Blink yellow dog named mustard and a coward dragon named custard the poet has very vividly described every character to be brave except the dragon who is a coward but the whole situation changes when a pirate attacked belinda's house no one else had the guts to face him and surprisingly it was the dragon who killed that pirate all the characters are happy because they were saved by the dragon but they quickly changed their thoughts and consumed by their own ego they described themselves to be braver than the dragon poor dragon did not get the recognition for his bravery which he truly deserved let's read and understand this beautiful poem written by ogden nash followed by its poetic devices and rhyme scheme significance of the title and moral and at the end i'll show you the written summary and question answers but right now let's begin with its poet frederick ogden nash was born on august 19 1902 in new york us he was an american poet well known for his light verse for which he wrote over 500 pieces with his unconventional rhyming schemes he was declared the country's best known producer of humorous poetry by the new york times nash's first published poems began to appear in the new yorker around 1930 his first collection of poems hard lines was published in 1931 and this book was a tremendous success He died on May 19, 1971 in Baltimore, US at the age of 68. This poem is written in the style of a ballet. A ballet is a song or poem that tells a story. You must be familiar with ballets that narrate tales of courage or heroism this poem is a humorous ballet close to a parody read it aloud paying attention to the rhythm now let's enjoy the poem belinda lived in a little white house with a little black kitten and a little gray mouse and a little yellow dog and a little red wagon and a really truly little pet dragon Now the name of the little black kitten was Ink and the little gray mouse she called him Blink and the little yellow dog was as sharp as mustard but the dragon was a coward and she called him Custard Custard the dragon had big sharp teeth and spikes on top of him and scales underneath mouth like a fireplace chimney for a nose and a really truly daggers on his toes Belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears and ink and blink chased lions down the stairs Mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage but Custard cried for a nice safe cage Belinda tickled him she tickled him unmerciful ink blink and mustard they rudely called him Percival they all sat laughing in the little red wagon at the really truly cowardly dragon belinda giggled till she shook the house and the blink said weak which is giggling for a mouse ink and mustard rudely asked his age when custard cried for a nice safe cage suddenly suddenly they heard a nasty sound and mustard growled and they all looked around meow cried ink and oo cried belinda for there was a pirate climbing in the window pistol in his left hand pistol in his right and he held in his teeth a cutlass bright his beard was black one leg was wood 
it was clear that the pirate meant no good. Belinda paled and she cried, help, help, but Mustard fled with a terrified yelp. Ink trickled down to the bottom of the household and little mouse blink strategically mouse hold. But up jumped Custard, snorting like an engine, clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon. With a clatter and a clank and a jangling squirm, he went at the pirate like a robin at a worm. The pirate gaped at Belinda's dragon and gulped some grog from his pocket flagon. He fired two bullets but they didn't hit and Custard gobbled him every bit. Belinda embraced him, Mustard licked him. No one mourned for his pirate victim. Ink and blink in glee did gyrate around the dragon that ate the pirate. But presently up spoke little dog Mustard. I would have been twice as brave if I hadn't been flustered. And up spoke ink and up spoke blink. We've been three times as brave, we think. And Custard said, I quite agree that everybody is braver than me. Belinda still lives in her little white house with her little black kitten and her little grey mouse and her little yellow dog and her little red wagon and her real Leo true Leo little pet dragon. Belinda is as brave as a barrel full of bears and ink and blink chase lions down the stairs. Mustard is as brave as tiger in a rage, but Custard keeps crying for a nice safe cage. After a nice reading of this beautiful poem, let's now understand the explanation of this poem. Belinda lived in a little white house with a little black kitten and a little grey mouse and a little yellow dog and a little red wagon and a real Leo true Leo little pet dragon. The poet says that once there was a little girl named Belinda. She lived in a little white house. She lived with some creatures who were her pets. They were a black kitten, a grey mouse, a yellow dog and a little red wagon and of course a creature that the poet says was really and truly a pet dragon. In this stanza, the word little is repeated in lines, therefore it shows repetition. Also, the word and is repeated at the beginning of two consecutive lines. So, it shows the poetic device anaphora. Now, the name of the little black kitten was Ink and the little grey mouse, she called him Blink. And the little yellow dog was as sharp as mustard, but the dragon was a coward and she called him Custard. Coward is a person who is not brave. In other words, he can also be called as a weakling. The poet explains the name of all the animals that are tamed by Belinda or all the animals that are kept as pets by Belinda. He says that the name of the black kitten is Ink. The name of the grey mouse is Blink. The little yellow dog had yellow color and so she called him Mustard. And the dragon that was a coward, means a weakling, was called Custard. In this stanza, anaphora poetic device is used with the repetition of the words and the little in two consecutive lines. Also, a simile is used in the line where the dog is compared to mustard. A mustard is a yellow colored flower. Since the color of the dog was yellow, therefore, he was called as Mustard by Belinda. Custard the dragon had big sharp teeth and spikes on top of him and scales underneath. Mouth like a fireplace, chimney for a nose and real Leo, true Leo, daggers on his toes. The poet describes the dragon that it had big sharp teeth and spikes on top of his body. This means that its skin was pointed on the top. On the lower part, it had scales, which were bony plates to protect the skin. 
the same kind of uh, scales which are there on fish or reptiles his mouth has been compared to a fireplace because it is assumed that dragons can release fire from the mouth therefore simile is used here even his nose is compared to a chimney which is used to pass out smoke his feet or toes are like sharp knife and sharp knives are called as daggers belinda was as brave as barrel full of bears and ink and blink chased lions down the stairs mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage but custard cried for a nice safe cage so now the poet explains the inner strength or the bravery of various characters of the poem he says that belinda was as brave as a group of bears and ink and blink that is the kitten and the mouse were so brave that they could hunt lions so here he has shown the bravery of the kitten and the little mouse that they could even hunt a lion the dog was also very brave just like an angry tiger but in contrast to all of them there was custard custard the dragon was not as brave as he was afraid of everything that he always demanded a safe cage to sit inside and that is why custard the dragon is called as a coward in this stanza there are two examples of simile belinda's bravery is compared to that of barrel full of bears that is in the line as a barrel full of bears and second example is mustard's bravery is compared to that of an angry tiger because mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage that is a tiger which is angry belinda tickled him she tickled him unmerciful ink blink and mustard they rudely called him percival they all sat laughing in the little dread wagon at the realio trulio cowardly dragon The poet here says that Belinda used to tease the dragon in a very cruel way. Ink, blink and mustard also made fun of him by comparing him to a knight named Percival. This Percival was a knight in King Arthur's court and he was thought to be brave but he ran away due to lack of courage. So his cowardness is related to the dragon's cowardness that is custard's cowardness and they all used to tease the dragon while sitting in their little red wagon in this stanza the poetic device repetition is used because the word tickled is repeated in the first line and in the second line personification is used because ink blink and mustard call custard as percival that is human like characters are given to an animal therefore it shows personification belinda giggled till she shook the house and blink said weak which is giggling for a mouse ink and mustard rudely asked his age when custard cried for a nice safe cage the poet says that belinda used to laugh so loudly that her voice echoed in the house blink the mouse used to laugh and make a sound of weak weak is a sound made by a mouse on the other hand ink and mustard would tease him by asking the dragon his age whenever he used to demand for a nice safe cage in this stanza the poetic device onomatopoeia is used This poetic device happens when there is usage of sound words to create a dramatic effect. Therefore the words giggled and weak are onomatopoeic words. Suddenly suddenly they heard a nasty sound and mustard growled and they all looked around. Meow cried ink and oo cried belinda for there was a pirate climbing in the window. So while all of them were making fun of the dragon they heard a sound of someone entering the house when they looked towards the window they saw a pirate which was climbing up the wall the dog barked at him and the kitten mewed to him belinda cried oh 
because all of them were scared of the pirate. A pirate is a person who robs the ship. In this stanza also, onomatopoeia is used because the words like growled and meok are used as sound words. Pistol in his left hand, pistol in his right, and he held in his teeth a cut lass bright. His beard was black, one leg was wood. It was clear that the pirate meant no good. The poet describes the appearance of the pirate. He says that the pirate was holding handguns in both his hands and had a little sword too. He was holding this little sword with his teeth and this little sword is called cutlass. He had a black beard and his one leg was made of wood. This means that though the pirate was a disabled person, but still he was frightening all the characters. Moreover, his main intention was to harm them and that's the reason why he carried two pistols and a cutlass. Belinda paled and she cried help help but Mustard fled with a terrified yelp. Ink trickled down to the bottom of the household and little mouse blink strategically mouse hold. When all of them saw the pirate, they got frightened. Belinda was so frightened that she turned yellow due to fear, that is she turned pale and she started crying for help. Mustard the dog started crying for help too. The kitten Ink ran down towards the bottom of the house as if he had already planned for it and the mouse Blink also ran into his little mouse hole in order to save himself. So in other words, all the pets of Belinda who considered themselves as very brave, they all ran away when actually the pirate came into the house. But up jumped Custard, snorting like an engine, clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon. With a clatter and a clank and a jangling squirm, he went at the pirate like a robin at a worm. When all the other characters that were earlier defined as very brave got frightened, the dragon did the most unexpected thing. He jumped onto the pirate and made such a strong sound with his noise as if the engine was producing a sound. Not only this, he hit his tail on the ground with a great force, as if it produced a heavy sound of metal being rubbed against each other in the underground prisons. Dungeon is an underground prison. He attacked the pirate just like Robin Bird attacks the worms. So in this stanza, the words like clatter, clank and jangling squirm these are all sounds of hard objects falling on each other. And since these sounds are used in the stanza, these words are an example of onomatopoeia poetic device. There are also many examples of similes in this stanza. For example, in the line snorting like an engine, where the sound of the custard is compared to the sound of an engine. Then next line clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon. So he made the sound with his tail in such a loud noise that it was as if the irons were clashing with each other in an underground prison. The next line where simile is used is he went at the pirate like a robin at a worm. Here the dragon is compared as a robin bird who attacks its worm or who attacks its prey, that is worm. In the same manner, Custard also attacks the pirate. The pirate gaped at Belinda's dragon and gulped some grog from his pocket flagon. He fired two bullets, but they didn't hit, and Custard gobbled him every bit. The poet here says that the pirate got so shocked by the dragon's reactions that he opened his mouth and stared with a shock. To gather some strength, he drank some alcohol from a container in his pocket. Grog means a drink, that is an alcohol. And flagon is a container which is made up of silver where this drink is stored. So he took out the flagon. He had two or three sips of that grog to muster his strength. After gathering some courage, he fired two bullets on the dragon but missed it. 
Custard the dragon ate every bit of this fierce looking pirate. He attacked the pirate and he gobbled him up that is swallowed hurriedly. Belinda embraced him, mustard licked him. No one mourned for his pirate victim. Ink and blink in glee did gyrate around the dragon that ate the pirate. So when the pirate was dead, Belinda hugged the dragon and mustard licked him. No one was sad for the death of the pirate. They were all very happy. Both Ink and Blink were running around the dragon in happiness as if they were dancing around the dragon. So here the poet says that all the characters were happy and they were showing their gratitude or thankfulness towards the dragon because he had saved all of them. But presently up spoke Little Dog Mustard I would have been twice as brave if I hadn't been flustered. And up spoke Ink and up spoke Blink, we'd have been three times as brave we think. And Custard said, I quite agree that everybody is braver than me. As they all thanked and showed their love towards the dragon, they just suddenly changed their mind. They were reminded of how they used to make fun of this coward dragon. And now, they all were praising him. So at once the dog said that it was just because of some confusion that he wasn't able to do anything. Otherwise, he would have been twice as brave as Custard. Both Ink and Blink also said that they would have been three times braver than Custard. The dragon said that he fully agreed to this, that all of them were more powerful and braver than him. So in this stanza, we come to know that all the animals were really very proud of themselves. They did not acknowledge the worth of custard. They did not acknowledge the bravery of custard. But on the other hand, they were just talking about themselves, appreciating their own worth, their own bravery over custard's bravery. Belinda still lives in her little white house with her little black kitten and her little grey mouse, and her little yellow dog and her little red wagon, and her realio trulio little pet dragon. Belinda is as brave as a barrel full of bears, and ink and blink chase lions down the stairs. Mustard is as brave as a tiger in a rage, but custard keeps crying for a nice safe cage. At last, the poet used the same lines again to show that after this terrific episode in which the dragon was the hero, where all other characters still undermined him or underestimated him by saying that they were more powerful than him and could have handled the situation in a much better way. The poet says that life started again in the same manner. Belinda still lives in that little white house with ink, blink, mustard and custard and all of them were very brave. Whereas the dragon is still a coward who always wants to stay in a very safe cage. There are many poetic devices used in this poem. Let's now look at them one by one. The first poetic device that we are going to see here now is alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of consonant sound at the beginning of closely placed words. There are many examples of alliteration in this poem like Lift in a little, where l sound is repeated. In called him custard, k sound is repeated. Brave as a barrel full of bears, where b sound is repeated. Custard cried, k sound is repeated. Beard was black, b sound is repeated. Clatter and a clank, k sound is repeated. And gulped some grog, here g sound is repeated. We'll now look at the next poetic device, repetition. Repetition occurs when a word or a phrase is repeated in a sentence. For example, the word little has been repeated in stanza 1 and 14. The phrase tickled him has been repeated in stanza 5. The poet has repeated the word suddenly in stanza 7. The word pistol has been repeated in stanza 8. And the word help has been repeated in stanza 9. 
The third poetic device used here is anaphora. Anaphora is the repetition of a word at the beginning of two or more consecutive lines. For example, the word and is repeated in stanza 1, 2 and 14. This poem also shows many examples of similes. A simile is a comparison which is made between things or ideas using the words as or like. Let's look at the similes used in this poem one by one. The sentence and the little yellow dog was sharp as mustard. Here the dog has been compared to mustard using as. Mouth like a fireplace. Here the poet has compared dragon's mouth with a fireplace. As a barrel full of bears. Here the poet has compared Belinda's bravery to that of a barrel full of bears. Mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage. In this sentence, the poet has compared mustard's bravery to that of an angry tiger. Snorting like an engine. Here the poet has compared the sound of the dragon with the sound of an engine. Clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon. Here the poet has compared the sound of lashing of dragon's tail with that of clashing of irons in a dungeon. And the last sentence where simile is used is like a robin at a worm. Here the poet is comparing dragon's attack on the pirate like a robin bird attacks the worm. The next type of comparison made in this poem is metaphor. Metaphor is comparison of two dissimilar ideas. There is one example of metaphor here, which is chimney for a nose. Here the poet has compared the dragon's nose with a chimney. Point to be noted here is that in metaphors, we do not use the comparative words like as or like, as we use it in simile. Next, we come to personification. Personification is a poetic device wherein we give human-like attributes to animals, objects or living or non-living things. Now here in this poem, the phrase they rudely called him Percival is personification because here the poet has personified ink, blink and mustard by giving them the ability to speak. Another poetic device which is used here is onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is a device which is associated with the words of sounds. The poet has used sound words many a times in this poem. For example, giggled and weak, mustard growled, meow cried ink, clatter, clank, jangling. All these words are sound words that are used in this poem. The last poetic device that we are going to see now is refrain. Refrain is the repetition of a phrase or a sentence throughout the poem. Here, the phrase and a realio, trulio is used throughout the poem many times. Also, there's a repetition of sentence, custard cried for a nice safe cage throughout the poem. Let us now look at the rhyme scheme of the poem. A rhyme scheme is a rhyming pattern that is created at the end of each line. The rhyme scheme is found out by giving each line a letter. The first line is always given the letter A. If the last word of the next line rhymed with that of the previous line, then we give the same letter or it is given a different letter. Let's try to find out the rhyme scheme of this poem by taking its first stanza. In the first stanza, first let's underline the last words, house, mouse, wagon and dragon. The first line will always be given letter A. The next line ends with the word mouse. Mouse rhymes with house. Therefore, it will be given the same letter A again. Now let's come to the third line, which has the last word wagon. Since wagon does not rhyme with the previous line mouse, it will be given a new letter B. The last line has got the last word dragon which rhymes with wagon. Therefore, the same letter B will be given to this line as well. Thus, the rhyme scheme of this poem is AABB -B, and this rhyme scheme is followed in all the stanzas of this poem. In 
Lander's ballet, Custard is the central character and the poet has contrasted other animals with him. Although the poet describes the other characters as well, but this ballet majorly explains the heroism of Custard. Despite proving his capabilities, Custard wasn't truly appreciated by Belinda and her other pet animals because they all were boastful and proud of themselves. Custard the dragon was again treated poorly as usual. Since this story revolves around the dragon, Custard, the title, the tale of Custard the dragon is appropriate. The message given by the poem, The Tale of Custard the Dragon, is that every human on earth has his own capabilities and way of living. We should never judge people or discriminate against them because of the way they look or think. We must also never boast about our knowledge and power. Instead, we must act upon it and show the world through our actions. That's all in this session. I will come up with a new topic of class 10th very soon. If you like my teaching, please subscribe to my channel and show your love and appreciation by liking and sharing my videos because you all are my source of inspiration and I love you all. Also, don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified instantly whenever I upload a new video. Stay on for summary and question answers next. I will see you again in my next video now. Take care, God bless you and thank you.